will call this regularly scheduled meeting of the Stratford Board of Education to order. Today is Monday, January 23rd, 2023. My name is Andrea Corcoran. I'm the board chair. We do have a quorum. Thank you, everybody, for coming out on this gloomy night. One day it'll be sunny again. And uh, Mrs. Wilsey, will you please lead us in the invocation of pledge? Yes, please stand. We beseech you, Almighty God, to bless this meeting of the Board of Education, so guide and rule over our hearts and our minds that all our deliberations and decisions may be done in accordance with your will and lead to the advancement and welfare of the community of Stratford for whom we serve. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. At this time, would you all please join me in a moment of silence as we observe the passing of a dear friend, Mr. Robert Baird. Mr. Baird's moment of silence, he was meant, um, sorry, he meant a great deal to the Stratford Public Schools and the entire town of Stratford. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to our student representative reports. Um, Ms. Tiana Golden from Stratford High, you're up. Good evening. I hope everyone had an enjoyable and restful holiday season, and welcome to 2023. It is hard to think that our senior class will be graduating this June. Today marks the start of midterm exams for both SHS and VHS. Good luck, everyone. January 12th was a busy day for Stratford High. Ms. McNeil and her culinary students hosted central office to a fabulous luncheon prepared solely by our students. Thank you to everyone who could make it. Later that night, Stratford High School hosted a community open house. We are so excited that we can finally host this and get over 200 community members ranging from future students to alumni from the class of 1946, able to walk into the halls of the new Stratford High School. Signs were put up throughout the building so our guests could identify where, the old, where in the old building they would be standing. Thank you to Ms. Sherrick for her hard work in organizing this and our students for acting as tour guides. <clears throat> On Friday the 13th, SHS held one of their poetry jam open mic nights after school. Students were able to come up and read original and published pieces of work. On January 19th, our link crew hosted Coco and Cram, an event where hot chocolate was provided to our freshman class, and our link crew advisors ran study sessions in preparation for our midterm exams. We ended that week with the National Honor Society and Interact Club members providing hot chocolate to the staff of SHS. This past week in Stratford High School, under the direction of Ms. Rubel, with the help of Mr. Vicenzo and Ms. Kabza, participated in the Model United Nations simulation with high school students from around the world. The SHS team arrived at Yale University on Thursday night and came home Sunday afternoon. Our students took on the roles of UN representatives and policymakers to learn about the inner working of global politics and problem solving. Students utilized negotiation strategies to pass resolutions with other nations. We had student, students representing economic and social councils as United Nations officers for disaster risk reduction and the United Nations High Com Commissioner for Reg Refugees. Stratford High School students had a great showing. Their motions were passed and they were prominent speakers in their community, committees. In winter sports, our boys basketball team held their annual alumni game on Stratford on Saturday January 14th, and over 50 alumni returned to our gym for the event. It was a great time for all. Wrestling, we are excited to say that we have three female wrestlers on the team this year, and Lindsay Ruwalt was named co-captain for this year's team. Our highlights include four wrestlers competing in the two highly competitive Northeast <coughs> competitions. James Duhansik placed second and third, Lindsay Ruwalt placed third and Jake Tuzwan was placed third. Girls basketball is holding a hoops for hearing fundraiser on February 2nd. All donations are proceeds from all 
proceeds from the ticket sales will be donated to help improve deaf awareness within our community through CREC Soundbridge. Indoor Track has 80 students participating in this year, participating this year, and we currently have 13 who qualified for SWCs and five for state championships. They have two more competitions. Bowling has 20 members on the team and is getting ready to compete in the SWC and state championships. Cheerleading is getting ready for their tournament season and we learned that the UCA, Universal Cheerleading Association, selected three cheerleaders from SHS to perform at the spring, the spirit of Pearl Harbor Memorial Parade in Hawaii. Our dance team added POM as its additional routine and are now competing in two disciplines in their four upcoming competitions. Tomorrow night, before the Stratford versus the Nell basketball game, our 21st century after school program will hold a family night highlighted by Frisco and Longobard, Longobarbie's wood fire pizza truck. Thank you again, and I look forward to seeing you again in February. Thank you, Tiana. And from Bunnell High School, Tara Etienne. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tara Etienne, and it is a pleasure to be addressing you this evening. Congratulations are in order for business teacher Mrs. Chelsea Mauza and our DECA club. The Bunnell High School DECA chapter is one of approximately 1,300 chapters internationally to earn achievement or thrive level or thrive level through DECA's chapter campaign program. Our chapter is to be commended on its efforts to showcase the impact that DECA has in preparing our school's emerging leaders and entrepreneurs for college and career success. But now is only one of 12 Connecticut high schools to receive this recognition. Thank you, Mrs. Mazza, for your hard work, commitment, and dedication to, re to re reviving this organization. We are thrilled to announce that Bernal High School has earned the College Board's AP Computer Science Female, Female Diversity Award for expanding young women's access to AP Computer Science principles. This award acknowledges 1,105 schools for their work toward equal gender representation during the 2021-22 school year. But now is on Bunnell is one of only 832 schools to be recognized for achieving this important result in APCSP across the nation. This honor recognizes the outstanding work our school is doing to engage more female students in computer science. Thank you, Mr. Lou Spatrino, for your excellence in building a robust, equitable program for our students. The scheduling process will begin on January 30th. Counselors will hold individual meetings with students to review graduation progress and courses for the upcoming year. Counselors recently conducted a career interest inventory and lesson in all grade 10 classes. Counselors are working to support students with college applications, assistance, assistance for parents who need support completing the FAFSA was provided at a FAFSA workshop on January 5th. An additional workshop will be held on February 6th. FAFSA Challenge Celebration was held on December 21st. T-shirts and ice cream were given to all students who completed the FAFSA to date. Additionally, one lucky student won Apple AirPods that were raffled off at the event. Interpretation of scores for ASVAB testing was done on January 10th. On December 20th and, and December 21st, counselors met with all new students to BHS for a formal check-in on how being in a new school is going. On January 10th, the, MLS, the Men of Color Leadership Group visited Stratford Fire Department Company 2, which is located at the edge of Bunnell's campus. Students asked great questions and learned about the firefighters' jobs, are, what firefighters' jobs are like on a daily basis. The students enjoyed seeing all the bulldog imagery throughout the firehouse and are looking forward to, to developing relationships with these local heroes. On January 16th, members of Men in Color and Living in Color were panelists at the 
Martin Luther King event sponsored by Sterling House. Jakai Pavlis and Sydney Palika represented their clubs in BHS extremely well. MLC and LNC leadership clubs have been working hard on developing programs and events for Black History Month, which will include daily readings on our Bulldog Bulletin, an alumni panel, a school-wide art project, and an essay poetry competition. We started auditions today for our spring musical, Mean Girls, and, they'll, and they will run through Friday. We have an amazing turnout for auditions. We have a lot of new faces that will be joining us in the spring. Our show dates are May 18th and 19th at 7 p.m. and May 20th at 2 p.m. We will be holding a few fundraisers to raise money to put on a fantastic show. Our first one is March 4th from 4 to 8 p.m. at the Stratford Chipotle. Please check the choir and theater Instagram at Bunnell HS Choir and Bunnell Stage for a flyer so we can receive credit. We will also be taking a trip to see Phantom of the Opera this spring. Students are so excited to see this amazing show before it closes on Broadway. Before the break, the concert choir and select choir had an amazing performance at the holiday concert. Make sure you do not miss out on the spring concert. The select choir will be taking a quick trip to Flood Middle School for a 20 minute performance on Friday. They will sing for all of the choir students in an effort to start recruiting eighth grade students to sign up for choir at the now. We also will be running a few fundraisers. We are raising money to buy concert attire for both choirs that will be rented out by students every year for concert season. Please help support these students in their efforts. Lastly, the Bunnell High School choirs were, choirs were invited to perform and sing at Carnage Hall in 2024. We will be looking into the possibility of this per performance opportunity. Thank you for your constant support. Our student athletes of the month of January are Gracie Solar, Rifle, and Dante Pierce, Boys Basketball. Six student athletes received all SWC first team honors during the first sports season. 17 student athletes in total received league recognition. Michael Trovarelli and Rohan Terrell both earned all state honors in football. 10 of Bunnell's, 10 of Bunnell's juniors have been working diligently after after school on their research projects that they submitted to the Junior Science and Humanities Symposium. This program is administrated by the National Science Teaching Association in cooperation with the national colleges and universities such as UConn. Two projects were submitted. One is titled Health Disparities and Discrimination Within the Medical System, a Growing Disease. In their research, the students found that the treatment and diagnosis of women in color in the United States is an experience that consists mostly of health dis disparities that reflect the social to polarized experience. The purpose, of their experience. the purpose of their research is to explore these disparities in healthcare in the hopes to add to the current body of research. The second is titled, What It Takes to Stop a Supernova Explosion. The students are, explo are exploring how a massive star goes through a supernova explosion and if its remains are 1.4 to 3 times as big as our sun, then it will become a neutron star. JSHS invite, invites high school students to report on the results of their research investigations in STEM. These students may be selected to present an oral or poster presentation at the annual symposium. The Student Government Association at Bunnell is currently working on a return of Battle of the Classes, an in-school spirit day where, where fun and exciting minute-to-win activities are played in a pep rally fashion to engage student interest. We are also in the process of planning our second annual spring fling dance to be held in the Bunnell Gymnasium. Finally, we will be hosting our second blood drive on March 7th. Lastly, Bunnell will be hosting its eighth grade open house on Thursday, January 26th at 6 p.m. This event is open to all current eighth grade students at Flood, St. Mark's, and St. James, whose high school pathway is Bunnell. Thank you for your time and have a nice rest of the evening. Thank you, Tara, and ladies, get home safely.
include an IRC for you in case it's icy out there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 We're going to move on to our presentations next. Um, Dr. Vita and Ms. Schmidt will be giving us a brief primer on the science of reading, the legislation surrounding it, and what it might mean for our district. So thank you, guys. slides that I will be um, using as an introduction. Some of you may have seen at the um, curriculum subcommittee meeting, but this is just an introduction for those of you who might not have been there. Um, and so we will begin with that to sort of give an overview of what we're talking about with the science of reading, and then explain how that information will help to move us forward in the other piece that we, the other topic that we're going to talk about this evening. So the science of reading um, is actually the research and um, information that's been collected over time that really helps to focus on the areas and the skills in reading that help students um, and individuals um, be successful readers. This year, the State Department of Education and the Connecticut Association of Public School Superintendents um, have collaborated on a master class, what they're calling a master class. This is the first year that it's, ha it's happening, and cohort one began actually back in June. Uh, 12, uh, there were spaces for 12 districts. Districts had to apply, and um, so we, Stratford is part of cohort one. There are five what are called plenary sessions, or sessions where information is shared. Uh, the topics are phonemic awareness, phonics and word recognition, comprehension and vocabulary, and comprehension and fluency. And each one of these topics is addressed by a national expert in that area. So when Stratford's team, along with the other districts, attend a plenary session, the focus is on one of those skills, and we're presented with the research about strategies that have been successful, in addition to information about student and um, individual acquisition of reading skills. So at the plenary sessions, all districts are there, so we have an opportunity as a participant to have some time for interdistrict networking as well during those times. In addition to that, all of the districts that are um, part of cohort one um, have been um, assigned uh, an affinity group. So Stratford is working with East Haven and Derby. We are the three, the three districts are an affinity group, and we meet um, separately from the plenary, probably in the afternoon, actually in the afternoon of the plenary sessions we get together. But then outside of those plenary sessions, we also come together um, in one of our districts. So we've had two affinity meetings, uh, one in East Haven and one in Derby. The first session was on MTSS, or um, Multi-Tiered Systems of Support, SRBI. Uh, and the second um, was on assessment. And Stratford will host the third um, session that will be coming up in March. I think, yeah, March is, is our date for hosting it. And what we do during these times and with those topics is to talk about um, successes that we've had, but also challenges. And so there's a very um, deep, robust conversation about that, and um, each group actually shares their process and what happens um, in district in each of those areas. The third um, resource that we have as a result of being part of this cohort group is um, actual coaching by um, Mr. Guy Stella, who some of you in Stratford may um, remember. He has a very um, um, long connection, I would say, with Stratford, as well as Ms. Therese McDonald, who is an expert in reading. They come to Stratford, they meet with us. We have a meeting with them, next, well, actually this week, uh, virtual meetings with them this week. Um, and they're very encouraging and bring suggestions to us um, when we talk about 
um, the science of reading in pre-K um, through three classrooms. So, so far, the co cohort one has been, has demonstrated success um, in the objectives of the program, and to that end, they've already started cohort two and cohort three this year, and they're planning to continue for next year as well. So it's been, it's been a, um, it's a commitment on the part of those who are part of the master class that go from this district. It's quite a commitment to, um, to the work, but it also has been very rewarding in terms of the information and uh, that we're not only gaining from the national experts, but from other affinity um, meetings that we have as well. So Stratford's Science of Reading Masterclass team is composed of really the educator um, stakeholders that we have um, who are very deeply involved in teaching students to read. So we have uh, obviously um, an administrator, reading teacher, teachers who work with multilingual students um, and with those with students who um, have exceptionalities as well as our classroom teachers. So you'll notice that we have identified here the um, individuals who are part of the master class and these are individuals who um, work at Nichols School. And Nichols School has been identified as a lab site. So after attending a plenary session and or an affinity session, they, they come back, discuss what they've learned, and in many cases, look to implement some of the strategies um, that we've heard about. Sue Schmidt, as the uh, pre-K 12 uh, literacy coordinator, and myself are involved um, in all of these sessions and meetings as well. So from the very beginning, at the very beginning of the process, um, for the Science of Reading Masterclass. Um, as a team, we looked at a survey, answered questions on a survey, which helped us to, do, to uh, prioritize some of the needs that we felt we had in the district. As a result of that, a pre-K-3 district literacy plan was developed, and um, we made sure that it was an alliance, um, excuse me, an alignment with our alliance plan, our strategic operating plan, our school improvement plans and our portrait of a graduate. After that, then each of the elementary schools um, aligned to their building literacy plans with the district literacy plan. So again, we're focusing on pre-K-3 in this conversation about the science of reading. Then, um, after it, you know, in addition to that, we have opportunities for all of the stakeholder groups to share with their like uh, partners <coughs> what we're learning in these plenary sessions. So um, Diana, for example, Diana and Sue are turnkeying the professional development that they um, have received at the plenary and the <coughs> affinity meetings with um, the administrators of elementary schools in administrator PLCs. So, and it's not just the principals that are meeting in these PLC meetings, it's also the assistant principals as well. So it's, there are robust conversations, there's a lot of work involved in this, um, and I will also say that, you know, in looking at information that we're collecting as a result of that and, and making more um, cogent decisions about information, about reading, um, has been very helpful and I think come out of this um, the conversations that we have. So now that all of our new learning will help us in the next phase of uh, the work that we have ahead of us. Good evening. Before I present this next part, I just want to thank Dr. Asunde, Dr. Gaeta, Dr. Daniels for their feedback and support as we put together a plan to move Stratford forward, knowing the information that we have with the science of reading. So I thank you all very much. Identified here, like Dr. Gaeta had mentioned before, are some of the elements in the science of reading. It involves vocabulary, phonemic awareness, fluency, reading fluency, oral language, phonics, reading comprehension. The most important thing you can see is the bold at the bottom. The science of reading is not a program, but it is a body of research. So it is our job in Stratford to determine 
How does that fit for us here? As you know, and as we know, the state has identified programs that we need to use. How are we going to go through the process in looking at those programs while at the same time using a program that we have in Stratford as well? So that being said, we also look at the research. We also look at what researchers are saying <coughs> out in the world, but also to us as they're presented. We also have to determine, is it research or is it journalism? And that is something that is our job to decide. So based on that, what is our plan? <coughs> the first part of our plan involves three major committees. Some of you sitting here will see your name as a part of those committees. Um, so thank you very much for <laughs> So the first committee is the core committee. This group and the job of this group is to go to CES and learn how to use the Science of Reading rubric in order to determine the programs that are out there for which one might be best for us while at the same time looking at the new reading units of study, K2, from Teachers College. The review committee, the review committee is going to also use the rubric, but the core committee will turnkey that information to the review committee. They will have an opportunity to go to CES, use the same rubric, and be able to make a recommendation to the superintendent's committee. The final committee is the superintendent's committee. Some of you sitting here will see your name on there for the first time too. And this group will be able to make a recommendation for putting one program forward for us to pilot next year while at the same time still using our program here in Stratford. So we have to make sure and make it clear to everybody we're not just throwing our program out the door. We're actually taking time to look at what our data says. We're actually taking time to see how it works with our teachers. How does this work for our students? And what kind and what elements of the science of reading are going to are used in each of these programs as well as ours? So that's a very important piece that we have here. What is our timeline? These are our phases. Now please know behind these phases sits a monthly calendar. And that monthly calendar drives these phases. So you'll notice the phase starts with June 2022, but in reality, we started this work as soon as we heard about the legislation. So back in June is when the first master class met to go to the plenary session. At the same time, many of us were attending the CES Literacy Council meetings, and at the same time, many of us met with Dr. Stella because it was our job to come up with a K-3 literacy, district literacy plan which was signed in October by um, Dr. Stella and Dr. Asande, at the same time also coming up with a pre-K-12 literacy plan. So we had a lot of things happening at the same time in these months. January, last week, the core, the SOR core committee went to CES. During that time, we trained how to use the science of reading we took our time, we were able to look at the model curriculum programs that the state put forward, and we chose four to move forward out of the ones that were there based on our rubric. The job of this committee will be also important that we turnkey this information to our review committee. Another important piece for the core committee is to make sure that we follow through with whatever the superintendent's committee decides on to make sure that we come up with a plan to model a pilot program and train the teachers. In February, that second group that was there will go over to CES after being trained on the rubric, have a chance to review the programs, and from there, make their recommendations. We are asking for at least two programs to be put forward to the superintendent's committee, along with the teacher's college reading units of study that will also be reviewed. 
the SOAR re Review Committee will make their final recommendations, and we, it is our job to put all of those comments and recommendations together on one sheet that will be shared to um, the superintendent, which will also at the end be shared to everyone here. So every, this information will always be open to all stakeholders. These are the four units that we put forward. And you'll notice at the bottom, it still says the Teachers College New Meeting Units. We will also be looking at that. In March, and I smile at this part because I originally had April, but Dr. Sunday had asked me to move the date up to March because of budget. So we are going to do our best to make sure that we hit that March date um, so that we can give him our recommendation so that the superintendent's committee can select one curriculum. In April, we will make sure that we get pricing. We're able to, <laughs> you just smile, yeah, it's good pricing. Um, we will make sure that we initiate training at what schools will be piloted. And then you'll notice it just says September 2023. We are going to look at this pilot at least for a half a year so that we can gather data. One of the other important pieces that you know, um, and I don't think I said this at the beginning, is that districts had an option to either immediately select one of the programs, to sign a waiver, or to ask for an extension. Our district decided to ask for an extension. What that does is, budget-wise, that gives us time. It also is allowing us time to do this research that we need for Stratford. Um, we are also looking at a pilot for foundations for our phonics, because we do recognize that that is one area that we do need to look at. Um, and we are, are, we are currently using it in the district with our special education teachers. So they are going to help train our classroom teachers on this pilot. We'd like to know, do you have any questions? Um, just let me some, but we'll keep it brief-ish because I know that this is uh, evolving uh, information, uh, but, and you can always tune into our curriculum meetings. A plug for Ms. Fajian over there. Um, Ms. Bidon. I would love to join curriculum meetings. Happens to be the same night as dance, so I will not do that. I have a quick question for you about Teachers College. It, it's not on the approved list of programs. Why is it being put forth? So you are allowed to um, apply for a waiver, and if you can prove that you meet the requirements of the science of reading, then you can um, go ahead and put it forward. Actually, in July 2022, um, the State Department of Education and the legislation said that reading means evidence-based instruction that focuses on competency in the following areas of reading. And then they listed those science of reading ones they have. So this is now a part of legislation. So it doesn't only say programs anymore. It also says this. Just as a follow-up to that, if we have to prove through this through the theory behind the science of reading, through the you know the, the techniques that are learned through that, that our program is successful or that it's successful for Stratford is part of that looking at the historical reading scores. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is a part of it. Oh yes, that is part of the waiver process. Thank you. May I ask a quick question? Have we been approved for the extension? So I have reached out to the State Department to ask them about the timeline is for approval, and they said they will let us know as soon as they can. Um, there may be another piece to it. They haven't decided that yet. Okay. Thank you. I know, I know it's been yep. sort of a, a wonkily rolled out situation. Um, just a few. When can we get a copy of that presentation just so I can have time to really absorb everything that was shown on there? Um, and then formulate probably a ridiculous amount of questions. But then um, you did mention the foundations, um, and that I know it obviously it is used um, with our students, some some of our students with exceptionalities. Um, 
Are all of our special ed teachers trained and certified in that program? Do you want me to answer? Sure. No, not every single teacher. Every school has a teacher. That is certified. Yep. Yeah. And yes. they will be doing the turnkey too. We're going to work on a rollout plan um, that also includes additional training from from foundations. Okay. Um, to, so to answer your first question, I am re-presenting this in a different way to the curriculum committee in February. Okay. So what you will see there that is different is you will see the actual calendar. So you'll see things more in depth. That's okay. fine. Can I? But in the meantime, can I? That's yes. And then as far as foundations goes. This is a pilot that we're just doing for right now. We want feedback from the teachers. We also want to look at the data from students. So if this is something we decide to roll out, then yes, as Heather said, we will make sure that there's correct training. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah, and when is the, the deadline, <coughs> if, if we don't get the extension, when is the deadline for us to make that transition? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of districts are asking that question at this point. Um, technically, the legislation says we're supposed to um, be in place on July 1st. Um, but, you know, the conversation really around the state is it's, it's a lot of change to take place in a short amount of time with specific programs. Um, that's, that's as far, the state is still still trying to like respond to some of the concerns that are being addressed. So we're doing our best, I think, by um, you know, really advocating for a position in the cohort one uh, in the SOAR master class, I think, as well as the alliance plan that we put forward for early literacy um, has shown that Stratford is doing everything it can possibly do to um, you know, to make sure that we're knowledgeable about what's best for our students. Um, we've been very upfront and very much involved. I mean, for those people who are involved in the master class, the affinity programs, and what's going to be coming up, it's it's really a lot of work for them. But we feel it's it's good work for us to do, um, and we have been people have been talking to the state, and I'm sure that. Um, Ms. Coopy, you know, will share a little bit about um, the legislative breakfast that we have. I mean, this is something that comes up continuously in conversations all around the state. So the direct answer to your question is the legislation says July 1st. Uh, the extension um, that we put in, mostly extensions, I don't know of any others, but um, mostly extensions are for fiscal reasons, for finances, because of the cost of implementing these programs, it's it's extensive. It really is. And and so is is part of our intent to, to get the extension so we can run a trial period with a couple of different programs. Yes. So we're asking for an extension for one year. Typically, you know, an extension beyond the July first legislative. Start. But but is that solely for the purposes of trial? Yes. Oh. Not trial and error, but trial and error yes. of these programs yes. to figure out which, yes. of, I think you said two plus the third. Well, it gave, a, it gave us time to um, do the research that we need to do using the rubrics that we have. It's giving us time to pilot the program that's being put forward as well, but it's also financial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll do a much better job with this state mandated program than the CT says did for <laughs> us. Uh, maybe trial and error might be the best way. Tough. I mean, I know just from the conversations that I've been a part of at various uh, CES events and um, uh, another legislative breakfast that districts around the state are kind of frustrated with the um, just all of it, with the deadlines, with the extensions, with the way, and it's all sort of, um, it seems to me to be sort of uncertain in a lot of aspects. So I appreciate, you know, the, the parameters that you guys are working with. I just have a quickly to Mike's yeah. question. Um, I think the extensions are more quickly um, approved because part of it is if you apply for the waiver and you're not approved, your next step is to apply for the extension because there's so much work to go through the um, waiver process that districts are having a hard time. So as a kind of like a, a next step, it's apply for the extension while you work through 
through that. So Stratford has already applied for a waiver? For the extension. For the extension. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you just say that the waiver was first? No, I'm saying you can. If you choose, some districts will say, well, our scores are yeah. amazing, right? Like, we don't want to move to, in this direction. We would apply for the waiver. But when they do it, it's not approved. So their next step is an extension. Any other questions for our literacy experts? Guys, thank you so much. I appreciate this, the building our knowledge. Uh, we will move on to public forum. To the best of my knowledge, we do not have any public speakers tonight. Uh, my knowledge is correct. <laughs> um, we'll move on to administrative executive reports. As you all might have noticed, Dr. Sunday is not here. So we'll move on to Ms. Mangini and her Chief Operating Officer's report. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to keep you updated on our fiscal year 24 budget um, process and progress. We are diligently working to pull all the numbers together to analyze everything that we present to you. And we are still very much on track for um, Dr. Osunday's superintendent's presentation on February 6th. Um, we will be getting you the budget notebooks with the complete um, budget request for sometime probably around the 2nd or 3rd of February. Um, our plan is next week to review all our reports as we finalize numbers and we are putting together a summary for you of all those changes in the salary lines. We talked about that a couple of months ago. We're trying to make it as easy as possible for you because of all the shifts that we've had this year. So we will be taking care of that. Um, also, I wanted to bring to your attention a recent change with regard to the Aspire program. As you may recall, we've had a significant number of conversations over the past year regarding the district's arrangement with Aspire and its utilization of the Honey Spot School location. Um, as a result, we did have a number of conversations with the Aspire leaders, and at this point it's been decided that Aspire will be leaving the Honey Spot location at the end of the school year. And we are working under Mrs. Borges' direction with our PPS coordinators to meet with all our families who attend Aspire to create optimal transition plans to meet our individual student needs as we deal with the change. And as we get through the budget process, you will see that we're working towards program adjustments that will allow us to basically remain budget neutral in this area. And lastly, I just wanted to follow up on the request for information on the after school enrichment programs. A lot of um, facts and figures here, but they're all good. They have um, currently running out of 10 schools using ESSER funds. There's a total of 32 clubs that have operated to date with a total enrollment of 529 students. And Mr. Hicks from Second Hill Lane confirmed for me this morning that as of next week, he has four additional clubs with an additional 60 students. So that's pretty exciting. We will be having almost 590 students that are um, participating. And the after school clubs that are being run offer a great variety of topics. There's book clubs and STEM clubs and math clubs, a garden club. Uh, the STEM challenge, arts and crafts, photography, just a real um, great variety. So it's been pretty exciting and it's really nice to see our ESSER grant funds being utilized in this manner that they were really set to do. So um, we'll see if there's any more at it as we get through the spring. That's my report. That's great. Thank you so much, Ms. Virginia. Any questions for yes, sir? So, so the Aspire program at, at the Honey Spot School, is, are there any future plans for that building or has anybody been in contact with the town? Is, what their desires might be. We have not yet. We um, will be discussing this with Dr. Sunday upon his return this week, and then we will reach out to the town, and we are actually refocusing to see if there's anything that we as a school district may feel the building could be of value. Of course, bearing in mind that it would take a lot to bring it back to a school, there's a lot of maintenance being required, but we are discussing that. And, and it was my recollection, recollection during the earlier talks that beyond just maintenance, it didn't meet the current codes of, of 
school building safety. Yes. That's what I'm, we're being led to believe, and it's definitely, if you go onto the state um, listing, it's no longer listed as a school. So in order to get it reinstated as a school, yes, they would come out and probably, I know Brett Ruggiero has guided me on this, and there's probably a significant amount of work that would need to be done at a very large cost. And, and do we have any, any insight into, you know, a, a possible need for reusing that building? I know we, we're talking about some different, different things, different uh, reorganizations. I mean, do we have a plan where we say, yeah, we'd love to make that school back to a school and, and let's try and advocate to get it that way? Or are we like, let's stick with the status quo and, and just use what we have? We weren't certain what was going to end up happening with the SPIRE program up until recently, so I think I know that our thought process at this point was to internally come up with some thoughts and as I said we will be talking with Dr. Sunday and then we will certainly be bringing our some ideas to either plant planning or the board um, but we need to kind of refocus internally to make certain that we really have this thought out. Thank you. And hopefully you know keep the students at the center of it and, and find them you know a, a good placement. That, that, that would be Absolutely, they're always first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> May I ask a yes, ma'am, I'm sorry. Um, I might have missed this, but what prompted this decision to terminate the contract? It wasn't so much terminating a contract, it was so initially trying to find a contract. Mm -hmm. um, right. there, they, we had all of us who are fairly new in our positions within the last couple of years uh, recognize that there wasn't really a signed contract mm -hmm. so we were instructed by the board and um, Dr. Asunde did encourage us to work through uh, some kind of an agreement to memorialize it in writing with Aspire and quite frankly we just couldn't come to terms that we thought were beneficial to both sides. Mm -hmm. So what does this change do for the rate that the rates that we're paying because it was my understanding that usage of the building, you know, allowed us some kind of a break in how much our, you know, like Stratford students who go there because it, it pulls not only Stratford students but students from other um, areas and so there was some kind of benefit in terms of how much um, we were paying per student. That was my understanding. That, that was the belief. Uh, we weren't as convinced, quite frankly, that our um, what we were being charged was okay. really uh, as advantageous as we thought it should be. Could be argued both ways, obviously. At this point, we're pretty confident, of course, each child will be addressed individually mm -hmm. to find what is best um, for, as a transition plan to that child. However, we are pretty confident based on our preliminary reviews that it will not be an addition to our current operating budget. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am, this is okay. Thank you. Um, Ms. Porges, I don't expect you to have this data at the top of your mind, but how many children are infected and what are their ages? 11 children. Thank you. And their ages? And it spans our grade. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions for Ms. Mangini? Thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll move on to Dr. Gaeta and her teaching and learning report. Thank you. Actually, the January report is really looking toward the February board meeting because we have several happy occurrences to um, recognize at that time. Um, at the end of this month, you probably all know that Eli Whitney Principal, Mrs. Uh, Victoria Florek, will retire from Stratford Public Schools. And at the February meeting, uh, we will recognize Mrs. Florek for her years of dedication to Stratford schools, children, and community. So we're all really looking forward to that. Um, sort of coupled with that, the Eli Whitney Elementary School, um, we'd like to, and, and we did actually have a conversation with them today, to commend Eli Whitney School for being recognized as a school of distinction based on their high growth of math for all students and their high growth of math for high needs students um, based upon last year's Smarter Balance results. So we were able to um, have a conversation with the staff today and obviously we want to um, recognize them again. So looking forward to that. Um, I, you know, again, when we were talking with them, this is one area, mathematics, but 
it takes a whole team, you know, kids to want to be in school, to feel supported. Um, and so I think that, you know, that says a lot about us as a, as a, as a school district, um, that we continually strive, regardless of the level, whether it's elementary or high school, to have our kids be in school and come and want to, and want to be here. So um, that's, that's really um, an effort that everybody has to contribute to, whether you're a math teacher or you're a physical education teacher or an art teacher or whatever, we have to connect with our students. So, um, so kudos to them. Also, um, on December 1st, a CAS a visiting team came to Franklin School to interview staff and families and tour the school. And as a result of that, Mrs. Arlette Johnson, the assistant principal at Franklin Elementary School, was recently recognized as CAS Assistant Principal of the Year. So, so it's going to be a great meeting. Um, I also uh, wanted to inform the board that um, in February, um, the dual language program at, Stra at um, excuse me, Second Hill Lane will be hosting a site visit for MABE, which is the Northeast region of the Multi-State Association for Bilingual Education. Uh, on February 7th, 9th, and 10th, there will be visitors from Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut visiting the bilingual um, classes to see how the program works. And um, Ms. Masari will also be presenting um, at their March conference in Hartford, and her topic will be on presenting, developing an integrated curriculum with literacy, language, and culture embedded throughout the day. So we look forward to hearing a little more about that. And last but not least, I, you know, I think we want to thank Mr. Del Piano, his staff, and Mr. Um, Spatrino for being, for helping host the legislative breakfast last week. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Spectacular. Any questions for Dr. Gittin? Can you repeat the language name? Do you mind again? I'm sorry? Can you repeat what you said? Was it the language name? Yeah, the, with, um, school distinction. The recognition? The distinction. Yep. Because I think we should be clapping them up. Like, <laughs> all of our successful yeah. yes. are here. <laughs> Um, they were recognized as a school of distinction based upon the, um, their high growth of mathematics for all students at Eli Whitney. And well, it, this is because of Smarter Balance, so it's grades three through six, mm -hmm. right? And high growth of mathematics for um, our high needs students, and high needs is a super group, which includes multilingual students, um, students with disabilities, as well as um, students who qualify for free and reduced lunch. Awesome. Um, to quote, a uh, sort of paraphrase, I guess, Jessica Scandoro, who's the math coach there, um, she said the thing that really impressed her was the growth piece. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when students perform and achieve, that's, you know, that's one recognition, but this is a recognition of growth mm -hmm. from where they were in 2018-19. So, um, great, you know, they, they were really pleased with that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Dr. Gale? Yes, sir. The alliance plan that you, uh, presentation that you did at the curriculum committee, um, is that something that you can present um, at a board meeting, so maybe in March, or Definitely. at least um, getting us a presentation? Mm -hmm. and, and to your question about school governance, I did get an answer. Yeah. Um, that um, was the original alliance districts, as, as we thought, mm -hmm. that had school governance, and that Stratford is not required to do that. Any other questions for Dr. Thank you very much. Uh, we will move on to the consent agenda. Is it okay with you all if I take them all, if I take it as a package? Spectacular. I will entertain a motion to approve the meeting minutes from December 19th, 2022, as well as this month's personnel document. So moved. So moved by Mrs. Wolte. Second. Second by Mr. Henrik. Any discussion? Okay. Seeing none, roll call vote, Ms. Kupi? Yes. Mrs. Wiltsey? Yes. Ms. Grafavian? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Ms. Vidal? Yes. Mr. Henry? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion passes 7 to 0. We'll move on to items for action and discussion. There are no budget transfers this month. And our other item number two is the formal adoption of the tuition rates for 2022-2023. Uh, we did discuss this during 
Uh, our finance meeting a bit earlier. Disney, do you mind giving a very, very brief? Yeah, they talk. Nugget. <laughs> Uh, we do each year calculate the tuition rate based on our frequently and commonly used calculations throughout the state. We do it this late in the year because we do wait for the final EFS report to be audited because we use numbers and information from that report. Subsequently, we currently have before you our recommended tuition rates for 22 23. Thank you. And this number is different than our per people expenditure. Correct. Good point. <laughs> Madam Chair, motion to adopt the proposed tuition rates for 2022 2023 school year. Thank you, ma'am. Second on that? Second by Ms. Bedell. Any discussion? Okay. Seeing none, roll call vote. Mr. Henrik? Yes. Ms. Bedell? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Ms. Carol Fabian? Yes. Mrs. Wilty? Yes. Ms. QP? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion passes 7 0. Uh, we will move on to tabled items. Is there anything anybody would like to kick off the table? Okay, spectacular. We will move on to committee assignment reports. Uh, the first item is regarding the renaming committee. Um, this is sort of a recap of something that happened um, during the last school year, but we have, we will have been have convened, will be convening, um, a renaming uh, committee uh, for the English wing at Stratford High School. So we do have uh, all the members of that committee uh, in place. It involves uh, myself as chair, Dr. Sunday. Uh, we have two members of the plant planning committee. We do have an administrator. We have a teacher uh, from Stratford High School. We do have a parent of a student enrolled in Stratford Public Schools, as well as several other Stratford residents. Um, we will be meeting to go over the documents of the proposed honoree um, and uh, hopefully within a few weeks we will be able to uh, complete that process so it's, it's pretty exciting stuff yes ma'am will this committee meet regularly or just as needed when there's an it application is, it is only it is only as needed for this particular project so um i've been told i've not done this process yet but i've been told it's about two to three meetings and it'll own this committee is a special committee solely for this particular task. Okay, so they won't be in place if something else were to No, then we would convene a, a fresh committee. Got it. Thank you. Any other questions? So I'm excited to keep you guys up to date with uh, what's going on with that. And then we will move on to our committee reports. Uh, Ms. Carol Fabian, your curriculum committee met January 10th. We did. We met January 10th. Um, we discussed the planning of a day of hope. And healing which will take place on May 16th this will be the third year that we hold that day um, there will be a catalog of opportunities to choose from including after-school activities through some of our community partnerships um, we also received an update um, of the Alliance grant fund and how some of that money has been allocated and where we are in that process um, and again that will be shared with um, the entire board um, it just focused more on each specific area that the Alliance um, funding had to target or hit and how we allocated that. And that was about it. It's a lot of curriculum. Good stuff. All right. Wonderful. Thanks. Uh, moving on to our finance committee. Ms. Wilson, we met prior to this. Do you have any? We sure did. It was quick. We had updates from special education, grants, food services, um, expenditures, expenses, and all the good stuff to come for the next budget. And our workshops are scheduled for the 6th, 8th, 15th, and 22nd of February at 6.30 here in this room. And uh, we will reconvene as a, well, I guess for the fifth time in February before our next board meeting on the 27th. Uh, quick question. Probably. Will we be streaming the finance? All, all of them will be streaming. Yes. We'll be streaming, so if you can't make it into this room, hopefully you can watch it home, and I assume that they'll be posted as well. So, mm -hmm. excellent, great. Uh, school plan and planning, Ms. Kippy? Uh, yes, so we met on January 5th. Um, a couple of things that we went over included uh, there was an issue at the now where um, the, there was some work being done and there was an issue communicating schedule-wise. And so um, there was a game being played, basketball game, between Bunnell and out-of-town um, schools. And there, were, there was no heating in the gym. So that became an issue. And there were no um, 
you know, place for the officials to change. So we kind of went through all of that. And now that this issue has come up, uh, Rich's team and the town are now communicating better in terms of scheduling so that something like this does not happen um, again. We received an update that at the start of this academic year, there were three roofing projects that began for uh, Chapel, Second Hill Lane, and Worcester. Chapel has been completed, and Worcester and Second Hill Lane are roughly at 98% complete. Um, there has also been incidents with fireworks being set off at Bunnell, and so this has prompted um, the need to add additional cameras. Um, so they're working on that. And then while doing that, they're also going to add additional cameras in this administrative building as well. Um, I guess when you come up the side, if you're trying to get in and you're trying to get buzzed in, there's really no camera to really see who's out there except that tiny little hole. So they're going to install a couple more cameras in here as well. And then um, the, we reached out to Ms. Mangini asking her, because one of the topics we discussed uh, through the committee was the legislation about zero emission school buses. And so we're asking Pam to help us set up a presentation from Durham uh, to the committee. And of course, all board members are invited uh, just to talk about kind of their roadmap for accomplishing this uh, over the next couple of years and how that would impact our um, services with them. So that's it. I wasn't. I know, we missed you. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Mr. Um, yeah, Mr. Hannah, how are you? So it was just a very, very <laughs> brief meeting. Um, I don't know if Mr. Bell might have some that, but um, they're looking forward to the budget and uh, working through that process with, with us. Absolutely, thank you. Mr. Bell? Uh, not a whole lot. We decided to um, postpone or cancel the February meeting because We'll be in the middle of budget at that point. Better to update after that. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Just Taylor. to add, yeah. um, since I also, yeah. Um, it was mentioned that um, our normally scheduled meeting for liaison is on April 19th, but that will be canceled because that will be the date, more than likely, <laughs> um, for our ordinance meeting, which is thankfully not during our April break this year. Great. Thank you for that update. Um, what I presume, Mr. Kennedy. Um, we met on uh, January 19th last week, um, and we uh, passed um, policy to the policy committee on um, a unified um, athletic handbook between Stratford and Benel. <coughs> we'll review next month a little bit after the policy committee has gotten a chance to look at it. Um, so it just unifies the you know the policy. Um, for both schools, and then the other thing that we talked a little bit about is um, we had a presentation from James Olson from the Stratford Partnership for Youth and Family um, Mental Health and Sports um, that was discussed last month a little bit from the student representatives, um, and it was a great opportunity um, to hear from the speakers to talk a little bit about their, you know, um, <clears throat> just mental health and sports in general, and um, it was presented to Stratford High and at the meeting, it sounds like it was discussed that it will be presented to um, Benel next year as well, the next time we do it. Um, so that's really all we talked about. I don't know if Ms. Wilson had anything to add. No, I think, it, I think we captured everything. Um, I'm happy to hear that it'll be going to Benel and I think that if it's a, effective, we have athletes Know, at the middle school level too yeah. that you could really use and it sure. um, and the response from Stratford High athletes was that it was very well received and helpful so yeah and, and Mr. Olson had said that it's something that can be done at the middle school level as well that's, so that's great. great awesome and my apologies to the pause you're here today because I inadvertently my, my eyes skipped over that Mr. Dell here. Well, we did not meet, as it says in the <laughs> agenda. However, we have been working on quite a few policies and we're going back and forth with some revisions and things and uh, stay tuned. I have a lot to read for February. <laughs> February is going to be quite a, quite a meeting. <laughs> sure. yeah. I can't wait. Excellent. Um, we'll move on to other committees. Ms. Kubi, any CABE updates for us? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so for CABE, um, we had a webinar with the State uh, Education Department to um, hear from a lot of people invested in uh, or um, at the State Department of Ed who are um, part of the um, K-12 
to three reading um, curriculum. Uh, there were over 200 people who attended that webinar. Um, afterwards, you know, many were not really satisfied with the answers that they received, and so I know there are like offshoots um, of different sessions happening just to get people more educated and answer their um, specific questions. Um, some of the things that came up was brought up by Ms. Schmidt in her presentation in terms of the extension and you know waivers and things like that. Um, on January 19th, we held our um, areas, Cave Area 6 Legislative Breakfast right here in Stratford at Stratford High School. Um, I want to thank uh, some of the leadership team for coming out, uh, Dr. Daniels, Dr. Gaeta, Ms. Mangini, Ms. Borges, uh, and Mrs. Temple for attending. We all know Dr. Sunday just became a dad, so he wasn't able to attend. Uh, some of the things that we discussed were um, priorities such as the education, education cost sharing, which there is a bill in this session, number 5003, that uh, the Education Committee is going to be reviewing that, so hopefully there's some movement there. Uh, we discussed um, school meals, which right now, um, I believe on Wednesday, they're going to be debating uh, an emergency certification, and this would, uh, if approved, it would fund free meals for the rest of the school year. Um, so I know I reached out to all of you to see if you were in support of us putting together a group letter to our um, legislators, and I did hear back from all but one of you. So um, I have it here if anybody wants to review the letter and maybe Andrea could sign it uh, on our behalf, right? And we could get that out tonight so they have at least tomorrow to review it and hear that we you know, want them to support this and so going into their decision making on Wednesday, hopefully. Thank you for doing that. Yes, yeah, no Thank problem. You. Uh, we also talked about, so we talked about the K curriculum, K to, K to 3 curriculum at the meeting at the breakfast as well. We talked about HVAC uh, supplemental grant program and they're trying to work on a bunch of different things to help school districts in that. Uh, also having processes to assess needs, um, so more to come there. We talked about the fiscal cliff, uh, many school districts are facing that. Uh, staffing issues when it comes to special education. Um, you know, a lot of districts, not only ours, as you've heard um, Heather talk about time and time again, where we have to go outside um, of our district in order to, you know, hire support. And some ideas that came up, like, you know, different districts want to be able to share and collaborate, and, you know, uh, because the cost of going outside, there's no. Um, there's no, what do you call it, guidelines to say you can't charge over X amount, and so it's really, really super expensive. So bringing that to the lawmakers' attention, uh, maybe you know they'll consider some something in place. But it's definitely, uh, I really was impressed. I have to say, with our leadership team. Uh, being able to break down our challenges here in Stratford in front of them and you know bringing that to their attention because I know as board members you know that's part of our job but being able to get it directly from the sources I was just so like appreciative <laughs> so um, that's all and also thank that's you to all. Representative Gresco for attending. oh yes Joe uh, Representative Joe Gresco was there uh, you know he was um, very happy to be in his alma mater and you know uh, commenting about how much nicer it is now <laughs> than when he went to school. Here. So it was it was a really great uh, turnout as well and lots of um, great discussions that we had. You bet. Well, thank you for your part in organizing the morning. Mm -hmm. um, super. Moving on to CES, um, we did meet earlier this month. Um, uh, a lot of similar discussions to what we have in terms of staffing and such, uh, but the good news for them is that their, um, their applications and enrollment for their schools for 6 to 6 and RCA are back up. They seem to be approaching pre-COVID levels. So that's really great because there's super opportunities for um, you know, our regional school students to take advantage of. Um, and I am on their finance committee. Don't be super jealous. But <laughs> 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 their budget is massively different and easier than ours. They run big because they are going on. Anyway, but so that'll be happening in February as well. Um, 
Start high renovation building needs? I ask you guys every month. No, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, sure. Ish, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, wonderful, great. Thank you so much. And I don't believe that we have any other committee reports to review today. Um, and so, seeing that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn our meeting at 825. So, 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 so,